Welcome everybody to our um, April 20th City Commission meeting. Um, we'll call this meeting to order. Um, and I think it's a short one, so that's always good. Um, Jennifer Cowan will lead us in the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance, if you would please rise. Thank you. Let us begin this meeting by taking a brief moment of silence and reflection. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, <coughs> we'll move on to presentations. We have the National Library Week, and I will turn that over to Commissioner Walker. Well, it's uh, absolutely my pleasure to read this proclamation this evening. National Library Week 2023. Whereas libraries provide the opportunity for everyone to pursue their passions and engage in lifelong learning, allowing them to live their best life. And whereas libraries have long served as trusted institutions for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. And whereas libraries strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are as diverse as the populations they serve and ensure the equity of access for all. And whereas libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, continually expanding their collections, services, and partnerships, and whereas libraries play a critical role in the economic vitality of the communities by providing internet and technology access, literacy skills, and support for job seekers, small businesses, and entrepreneurs, and whereas libraries are accessible and inclusive places that promote a sense of local connection, advancing, understanding, civic engagement, and shared community goals, and whereas libraries are cornerstones of democracy, promoting the free exchange of information and ideas for all. Whereas libraries, librarians and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. Now, therefore, I, Robert Walker, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the mayor of the city of Dunedin, Florida, and on behalf of the entire city commission, do hereby proclaim National Library Week, April 23 to 29, 2023, and encourage all residents to visit their library to explore the wealth of resources available. No truer words than our own library to need it. Mayor, commissioners, thank you so much for recognizing National Library Week. I know I say every day is Library Day, um, and I visit your meetings often um, to celebrate our library, but how lucky are we in Dunedin to have such a wonderful library with great staff and great support from our city and our commission. <clears throat> I also want to recognize and thank the Friends of the Library, the Library Foundation, and our Library Advisory Committee. They're all part of our library family, and their passion for making us the best library around is contagious. I feel so fortunate in my role as library director, and every day I'm amazed at how exceptional the staff is serving the public. From books to birding backpacks, online resources to Wi-Fi hotspots, museum passes, notary services, homebound delivery, even ukuleles that you can check out. There is something for everyone at our library. And I'm so thrilled to introduce our new, new service. Uh, the Dunedin Public Library is now a passport acceptance facility. You can book an appointment to get your passport and your photo at the library so you don't have to drive all the way you know, to 19 or Tampa or wherever. Um, so now not only is reading books your way to travel the world, your Dunedin Library is truly your passport to the world. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, Phyllis already knows what to do. <laughs> Stay right there. Yes. 
because we now have the um, Dunedin Library recognition of the first career online high school graduate. I will turn it back over to you, Phyllis. So I'm so sad our, our graduate, Claudia, unfortunately, was not able to make it this evening. Um, so I'm receiving her certificate that um, you all signed, and I, I appreciate that, and we will get that to her. Um, Career Online High School is a private, fully accredited online program where students 19 years and older can receive a high school diploma and career certificate. Um, Claudia Garcia started the Career Online High School program at Dunedin Library in July of 2022, and she just finished the program in January of 23. Her career certificate is in office management, and her goal after attaining her diploma and certificate is to pursue more education. So we are very excited for her. We currently have three full-time active students enrolled in the program with two new applicants going through the initial steps towards a possible scholarship. And each active student has chosen career certificates in various areas such as office management, child care, and education. So we're just thrilled. Again, another great service at your library. And I want to thank <coughs> our librarians, Christina Butcher and Carrie Caliccio, for overseeing this program. They meet with the students, and they're their contact and online uh, assistants. So we encourage anyone who didn't finish their high school diploma or maybe is looking to um, get that, um, it is an option, and um, we have scholarships available to do that. And again, just another great service offered at your library for free. So thank you. Awesome. And congratulations to her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now's the time for citizen input. Anyone wishing to come forward and speak to any topic that's not already on the agenda, please feel free to do so. Come on, Dave. Give us your name and address for the record. Hi, good evening. Uh, David Ballard Geddes, Jr. I live at 802 Georgia Avenue up the street in Palm Harbor. For St. Patrick's Day last month, the city of Tampa had dyed the Hillsborough River green in its celebration of St. Patrick's Day. The city of Chicago also dyed the river in uh, Chicago green to celebrate the holiday, thereby using dye to color the water. I also call into question last month's red tide here in Pinellas County as being something other than red tide. As a rule of nature, a red tide or a rhidophil bloom usually occurs in warm weather in the heat of summer. A rhidophil bloom, unlike chlorophyll, red tide depletes or removes oxygen from the water while also emitting a neurotoxin that affects the respiratory function of the fish. The smaller fish generally that can't escape a rhidophil bloom frequently fall subject to the red tide and wind up suffocating and perish on our beaches. I question what if someone intentionally dyed the waters of the Gulf of Mexico red and deliberately poisoned the fish in an act of environmental terrorism and disguised it as red tide in order to deliberately kill the marine life and get legislation in Tallahassee to open up its purse strings of government and to pay for the cleanup of our beaches, thereby killing the ecosystem and getting government to pay them to clean it up. After all, the Declaration of Independence, it clearly states to plunder our seas, to ravage the coasts, to eat us out of our subsistence, and to complete perfidy and works of death. If this is the unalienable right and the uh, liberty in pursuit of whoever's happiness, um, in doing such, uh, in my opinion, nefarious and terroristic activities, um, then we have a very uh, large legislative discussion uh, to be had. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, Rebecca. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Anyone else wish to come forward and speak? 
Okay, Hello, my name is Roby Wapley. I live at 2032 Yale. Before you start the clock, can I make just one quick comment? Have you guys ever had any discussion or thought about extending the three minutes? Yeah, no. It's a killer. We have. We've talked about it a lot over okay. the years. Well, could you talk about it again? <laughs> 30 seconds would make a big difference. Um, anyhow, I'm Roby Wapley. I live at 2032 Yale Avenue. I do have a prepared three minute and 17 second presentation regarding the city proposal for building the uh, pickleball and the fence dog park at Sterling Park. Um, but since we've heard, you know, do, no decisions would be made till later in May, um, I think it may be more uh, appropriate if I save that presentation for, for maybe into May. Uh, instead, I think it'd be more appropriate if I could just inquire on the current status from the city point of view on some of the items that have come forward. Um, it's, it's very difficult to get city staff time, you know, one-on-one -on -one time and go through the things. And uh, although I do want to do a shout out to Vince, he spent a lot of time with, with one of our teammates in reviewing our pickleball proposals in different locations. It was an outstanding piece of work with lots of detailed measurements. Um, and Vince took the time to listen, and I think he was impressed too. I think he would admit that. Well, he's the right guy for it because yes, he's he our would, parks and rec is. director, and he'd be the one making recommendations right. to our city managers. So. Yeah. But it's difficult. I mean, it's difficult to get Jennifer's time. Sure. We've got a lot of stuff we want to go through with her and all, but uh, I won't go there. Um, <coughs> so perhaps you could ad just address a few general questions to keep everyone up to date and keep us on the same track, and we could share information back and forth. So I'll just read my questions real fast, and then I'll just sit down sure. and let you comment on whatever you sure. can. Um, first of all, do we have a target date for reaching a decision regarding that original proposal? Have the commissioners and city manager and staff had the opportunity to discuss that original recommendation together and all the other suggestions and recommendations that have come forward, um, Veterans Park, Stormwater, um, Par 3. Has everyone seen those other suggestions? I know a lot of emails go out and I hope we copy everybody and everybody gets to see them. If you don't think your teammate has seen them, please send them on to the others. We'd appreciate that. Um, and specifically, has everyone seen that presentation for the other pickleball courts? Again, it was fantastic. There were diagrams, uh, measurements taken. It, it was really outstanding. Has the city received or um, had any communications with Achieva regarding um, their time stance and renewing for the current dog park on their property? I know that was an item brought up by Vince that, you know, we wanted to have it on our own property because we wasn't sure about it about their stance. Has the city received any documentation or communications from our local VFW or the American Legion um, regarding, or the other veteran groups that we've discussed in regarding to keeping it green? And uh, is the city investigating the possibility or feasibility of bringing back the PAR-3? That was, could be a revenue generator. Could we just all agree that pickleball and dog park are inappropriate? for this location and for a final usage decision for the future. There's so many projects going on in that neighborhood. Uh, at one end of the street, you know, we got the pool on the other end of the street, we're gonna have the, the uh, golf course reno, um, the Toronto Blue Jays uh, hotels just around the corner. There's lots of things going on in that neighborhood. Let's keep it green at Sterling Park. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to come forward and speak? Um, well, I wrote down the list of questions, but I mean, all of that is being discussed by with our city, our city manager, and her staff. Um, the target date—I don't think you know what that is yet, do you? No. Okay. Uh, yes, we have all seen all the suggestions. We've all gotten emails. Uh, I'm going to look at all of you. Yes, we've all been on the. Well, email. As far as I, I don't know, an email that I don't get. Right. But I know I've got a lot of emails. Yeah. Um, I, I don't believe I've seen the recommendations on pickleball, but again, I believe that our city manager and her team are reviewing that and will share that as part of their recommendation. So it's not unusual that we would not have seen it yet. Um, I, I mean, I, I would like to let our city manager do go through her normal process. Um, the achieve a time frame, no, we don't know that, but that's also a small dog park as compared to the size dog park that we're wanting to have. 
And I haven't seen BFW documentation, but that doesn't mean Jennifer doesn't have it. So do you want to share anything else? No, actually, I think that it's important to note that, that um, when we arrive at a recommendation for you, it's going to be a very comprehensive <coughs> recommendation, and it's going to contain all of the d component parts of that recommendation. <coughs> We're not going to piecemeal information to you one at a time. It's going to be all together in, in as I said, a very comprehensive uh, manner. I, I know that the residents are trying to get a meeting with me. You know, it, uh, I book out pretty, I mean, well, now she's so. going to be going on vacation. So, I mean, I think you're meeting with the right person, and that's Ben Skizzy. He is the highest up when it comes to Parks and Rec. He is the guy <coughs> you're supposed to be meeting with. Um, go ahead, Jennifer. No, uh, just just to, to we are definitely reviewing uh, every different location, which is what we were directed to do by the City Commission as well for, for the courts. Um, and all of those directives that, that were, were uh, provided to staff during the course of, of that city commission meeting, as well as uh, uh, answering some of the questions during the course of the meetings that, that Vince is attending and the time that he is um, uh, working with, with your team as well in regards to the pickleball courts. I'll, I'll say this. I know uh, I want to resolve this as quickly as possible as far as what the recommendation is. And, and to, to reiterate, again, as I said, during the course of, of uh, uh, the last foray, if you will, regarding Sterling Park. We're not going to make a rash decision. Everybody needs to calm down. We're going to do all of our research and then make a professionally sound technical recommendation for the good of the community to the City Commission. And it's, as I said again, it's going to be comprehensive. It's going to contain all these bits. The information that the neighborhood is providing to us, we will provide to all of you, but all at once and not bit by bit. The neighborhood is certainly um, uh, within uh, their their uh, right to, to email you incrementally, but you're going to want it all together too. You're going to want to look at it all together. Um, so so uh, it's it's a, going to be a process, and we are actively though working on this process. I met with Vince today. I met with him yesterday regarding pickleball, and, and so we're 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 working hard on it. Well, and we also have pickleball lovers that are dying to know when they can start getting built, they're getting frustrated. So it's it's not just this group, but I also want to say that I promise you from the bottom of all of our hearts, we're not going to come make a decision and have a quick meeting without you. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry. That's, I mean, you really don't. We will make sure that everybody knows that meeting's going to occur and that you will have a voice at that meeting. Um, and, you know, sometimes... We, our goal is to get it done, and, and they may have the recommendation in May, but we might not have the meeting until June. So I, I just ask for your patience. Yeah, and we're, and we're not pushing. Well, but I do think, I mean, I think people are getting a little impatient as many times as they're coming to speak about it. They're wanting to know when we're doing it. I'm getting questioned all the time. When are we going to know? And I'm just saying, relax. We're not, we're going to make... We need to let our experts, our subject matter experts, you know, go through their process. Um, as as you just said earlier, there there are a hundred things going on in our city at the same time, not just this. So they're working on many different things. And but I promise you, we're not going to do anything without you. I so, I you know. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Nobody else was coming up. Got that. All right. Now we'll move to <clears throat> action items. Um, pedestrian safety crosswalk uh, resolution 2307, our MOA with um, our memorandum of agreement with FDOT for the crosswalk crosswalks on Edgewater Drive. So, uh, Jennifer, um, would you please read resolution 2307 by title one? Resolution 2307, a resolution of the City of Dunedin approving a memorandum of agreement with the State of Florida's Department of Transportation's, <clears throat> excuse me, District 7 for the City to maintain pedestrian safety crossing improvements on the segment 15-020-000 of State Road 595 U.S. Route 19, Alternate 19, Edgewater Drive authorizing the city manager to execute said agreement and any amendments thereto and providing for an effective date. Okay, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, Commissioner Franey and Commissioner Gell. Thank you. Bruce, welcome. 
Good evening. Uh, Bruce Worth, Utilities Department, Engineering Division. Um, Jennifer described it, it well. Uh, so this is a requirement of FDOT's permit, which we obtained as part of uh, stamping the, the crosswalks on Alt-19. Uh, it's a requirement they, that, they, that we have to uh, have the commission approve the resolution which references the memorandum of agreement. So very simply, we're asking you to approve the resolution as read into the record, which references the memorandum of agreement, which we were asking to have the city manager sign. Uh, just a little background, you, you may recall you approved the award of this back in February. Um, the contractor is set to go Monday. Uh, this, is, this is only required for the, the Edgewater crossings and the, the ones on, on the causeway or the county, but uh, they're, they're there to begin on Monday. Uh, they think it'll take you know, two weeks to, to get both crossings done. So this is the last piece of that, that uh, process. And the crosswalks are... The locations? Oh, the locations, there's the, the ones at Orange, Florida, Fenway, and Albert. Okay. They all, they're all existing. Uh, they just don't have the brick pattern. Okay, and will there, again, for the benefit of everybody, will there be traffic diversion while we're doing this? Yes. Like what, what, what's all, how is all that happening? There will be. They, they have to, they'll do one lane at a time. It'll typically take them somewhere in the neighborhood of about 30, 35 minutes to do one, one side of each crossing. Uh, the paint dries relatively quickly. So during that time, they'll have flagmen that will stop traffic and they'll divert it around uh, each crossing as they go forward. Uh, we've been in contact with FDOT this week. Um, they've indicated that they, they don't want the work to begin until at least 9.30 in the morning and stops at 3 to, to kind of avoid the really heavy traffic on Edgewater. I'm sure uh, everyone will appreciate that. Yes. Uh, the other option was, you know, doing it at night, but we didn't bid it that way. So we're going to keep an eye on it. We hope to get through that fairly quickly. You know, we've done crossings out there before, the ones I've mentioned. We just didn't, you know, do it as much. So we've painted them. We've put in the lights. So uh, it's just, it's just going to be a matter of uh, them getting out there and, and moving traffic along uh, as best they can. Is it a different, I'm guessing it's a different cost to bid it at night? The difference to cost to do it at night? It, well, yeah, they'd have to, generally speaking, they'd have to bring in lights. Uh, that's that's so really all it is. We just typically didn't want to do, you know, our work hours are typically during the day. We weren't sure we want to have lights out there at night for the residents. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it, but it, it should move through fairly quickly. And the residents have all been notified this is going to be happening? They will be, yes. How? I, well, I think the contractor was to, to go at least along those. Um, those we like put it out as a notice. as a notice, but uh, you know, I, you know, as far as the number of houses, I, I think just locally they'll, you know, we'll ask them to at least knock I mean, on like a few Edgewater doors. Like Edgewater Drive people from Fenway to Union, they'll know, right, that I'll, this is I'll happening. To, yeah, we'll we'll have to see if we can get them to put a door hanger on there. Or well, I would suggest at least emailing that information to the. Edgewater Drive Committee. Okay. They'll tell everybody. All right, we'll do that. They, I mean, trust me, they'll <coughs> let everybody know that that might be, uh, that they will appreciate being put in the loop do and that. be angry if they're not. So. <laughs> All right, we'll do that in the morning. Um, Rebecca's got their contact information. We'll do. Okay, any other questions, gentlemen and ladies? Okay, anybody from the public wish to speak to this? Okay, uh, any final comments, Commissioner Franey? Nope, <coughs> no, I mean, this has been a long time coming. I'm excited what it's gonna look like. Somebody yeah. make sure they-, they Commissioner Kynes was Make sure they email Commissioner it. Kynes that this right. is happening. She is a resident, and these were her idea, <laughs> so. Right. Go, Deborah. She lives on. Anything, Jeff? No, John. Brown. Okay. All right. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Toringa. Aye. Commissioner Walker. Aye. Commissioner Gao. Aye. Commissioner Franey. Aye. Mayor Bajowski. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Bruce.
Okay, we have the resolution approving the membership reapportionment plan. Um, we're asking, I'm asking to table this. Um, but before you make the motion to do that, because then I can't talk about it, I want to tell you why. So Tarpon Springs came back this last month at Forward Pinellas <clears throat> and asked the board to reconsider. Nobody did until the end of the meeting, and Commissioner Smith from Largo decided to bring it up. And uh, the board voted to reconsider um, our, the apportionment plan and asked the forward Pinola staff to go back and <clears throat> give, give some options. I will tell you I've spoken to Witt. Witt is still wants to see Dunedin, Tarpon, and combined. Um, but I don't think the board wants that. I think what the board wants to do is just add Tarpon and, and give Clearwater another seat. That's what I, that's, that's the direction I think they're gonna go. Um, but trust me, I'm all over wit about it. I have his cell number. He can't stand the fact that I have his cell phone number. <laughs> so, um, there isn't really anything to do. I mean, we, we were thinking about doing another letter, but our last letter pretty much said it all. I mean, I don't know how we could outdo that letter. That was good. And it was very impactful. So, um... They're not bringing it back until where April, uh, July. So we have some time. So I would just highly suggest if you know anybody on the Forward Pinellas board, make sure you continue to talk to them and tell them that, again, it's not for us to say the cities that are going to be on there. Although I will tell you, as much as I love Tarpon Springs, the, let me explain this a little bit better. The, the, this, the federal, it's not about how many people we can have a voice for, okay? That's not what the federal rules say about how to fill an MPO board, Metropolitan Planning Agency board. Because um, we have up to 25 <coughs> seats. It is about <coughs> the population, the census came around, and you have to look at that census and make sure that the largest cities have the most voting power. So if, for instance, we filled up all 25 seats with 24 cities and a, and a county, well, St. Pete and Clearwater would have an equal percentage of vote to Reddington Beach. That's not fair, because they have 300 and some thousand people. So this new apportionment um, proposal puts them with three seats because there's 15, 13, 15 people on the board. So they're try you can't just add, it's not that easy. So by adding Tarpon, you're now diluting St. Pete and St. Pete is not gonna be happy about it. Um, and then you would need to add a seat for Clearwater because Clearwater is the second largest city. And then again, that reduces the apportionment for everybody else. So it's very complicated. It's not just about adding something. So frankly, in my humble opinion, leaving it the way it is right now with the recommendations that we approved is the best for the federal law that's required to meet has nothing to do with how I feel about Tarpon Springs. I just want you to know that. It's just, it is, from an apportionment pers perspective, the best thing to do. However, I don't need you all to try to remember all that or figure it all out. I think the most important thing when you're lobbying the people on the board is leave Dunedin's seat alone. <clears throat> Let everybody else figure out the rest of the complication. Just don't, don't make our seat temporary and rotating. I mean, you see all the projects that that all the people that have ever been on there have been working on in Dunedin. They're big stuff, life affecting things like the marina, you know, like the <laughs> causeway, like the causeway intersection. I mean, all of those things, the 580 corridor study that's being done right now that Wits watching over, by the way, and asking for better bus service. 
he sent those comments into FDOT. I wanted I meant to tell you that. Um, so I mean, there are a lot of big things <clears throat> that we need that direct connection. So, um, any questions on that before we do the motion to table? I have a question. Sure. So I was looking in the um, whatever this thing is, the rules or the I guess the new layout of the board as it would have been. I was trying to make sure I understood who's inland north and who's inland south. Oh, I mean, uh, where where are Tarpon and Safety Harbor and? Okay, and Tarpon and Safety Harbor. Who are they on this? Are North County. Oh, okay, gotcha. They're North County. Okay. Um, gotcha. They are. Yeah, no, that's fine. I was Smart, just rolling my Safety right Harbor and Tarpon are combined, and if you, even if you put their population together, we still have more population. I think when I looked at it the last time, mm. I have all the numbers. If you want me to search it out, I can maybe <coughs> tell you before the other, <coughs> end of the. Well, if North County six percent of the overall population, and we're three point eight, then <coughs> yeah, maybe not. not. Really. Um, did Tarpon do a letter of um, justifying why they thought it should be reconsidered? Uh, I don't know. They just came to the meeting, and spoke again a second time. Oh, so they didn't do? They didn't say this is why. I think they did. I'll have to go but back and look for my. If there's says why they feel that, it would be nice to have that. Jennifer, maybe you could send our letter where we just resend that to us so we have it handy. And then my other question is, what are the three? Who are the three county commissioners on it? Uh, Dave Eggers, Brian Scott, and Brian Scott's very supportive of Tarpon being on there. Okay, good to know. And I actually, I think Dave is too. Uh, but Dave represents the North County. Uh, being supportive so he's in a tough of spot. Tarpon having their own seat or Tarpon combining with us? Own seat. No, nobody's trying to take our seat. Oh, okay. Dave, and, Dave and Brian weren't looking to do that. They, weren't, they were looking to find a solution to address <laughs> Tarpon's concerns in other ways, which is why I've said I understand the position that Witt's in, and I don't want to fight that fight for Tarpon. Mm -hmm. Let them fight it themselves. I just don't want them to touch our seat. Um, I'll see what I have now. Yeah, you don't know Tarpon Springs population, do you? Thank you. Uh, it's twenty four thousand and some change, and I and I have all of that. Okay, that that's I cool. Can send you. <coughs> no, anything. I just have know. to look it up. But you're right. I mean, it's about saying why we should be on there and not getting into the rest. Of yeah, it's all about I, I it's agree. all about us, and um, our letter was well received and. Mm -hmm. And the only people that even voted against us in that first vote that we won, and there was a few, it was about <coughs> trying to address Tarpon, not trying to take away from us. Yeah, got you. I don't think anybody is trying to take our seat away from us. They just want us, they want to find a way for Tarpon to be on there. Okay, so Janet Long, do you have the last one of the commission? That's what it shows here. Uh, yes, you're right. It is Janet. She just doesn't come on. Okay. Not recently, anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for explaining the complaint. Yeah, no, appreciate it, is, it a it's lot. Fair. It's that not is just easy. adding a seat. and Because that's what I was thinking. <clears throat> just throw them on there. I don't care. <laughs> you know, but it's a... That's why they call it apportionment. So as, like, I think uh, St. Pete's population grew from the last census to this one by, like, 10,000 residents... Ours grew by one or two thousand. You know what I mean? Tarpons grew. They, they did grow at a faster rate we did than we did, if I remember correctly. Because I mean, they gave us all this information. Um, but okay, all right. So can I have a motion to table uh, the approval of this reapportionment plan? So moved. Second. Okay, Commissioner Franey and. Commissioner Gao, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, then we have the Harbor Jolly um, purchase order to extend their construction <coughs> admin services for the new City Hall project. Jorge. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Good Commissioners. Evening. Uh, the item before you, as the mayor indicated, is um, a request to extend and increase the existing purchase order with Harbor Jolly for extended construction administration services uh, associated with the new city hall project. Um, 
Harbor Jolly's original scope of services aside from uh, providing design and permitting uh, and construction document services included uh, construction management um, services uh, with respect to re reviewing uh, pay applications, um, RFIs, requests for information, shop drawings, um, and addressing um, final original um, completion uh, and uh, certification of the project once uh, it's completed. Their original scope of services was based upon the anticipated substantial completion in September of last year with a final completion uh, at the beginning of October. And obviously those <clears throat> have been extended as a result of delays on the project. So the item before you is uh, required in order to continue to pay them uh, those monthly uh, estimated costs, which we're at this point just projecting out six months in the hopes that that's not going to be necessary, but we wanted to increase the purchase orders uh, to that extent in order to allow for the processing of the monthly invoices associated with their services. Okay, any questions? No. Okay. Um, anybody from the public wish to speak to this? Seeing or hearing none, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Commissioner Franey and Commissioner Walker. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you. Jorge. All right. Then we have the proposed agenda for the 4th. Um, anybody have any changes? I don't have a change. I just want to remind you this is the, um, the, yeah. That night I met Tampa Bay Regional Planning Resiliency Conference, and I'm actually, you know, there as, uh, as a member of the board, and they'll, you know, they've got things going on at night. Um, and I so, was going to say myself, I am on the panel at 4 o'clock. I didn't realize that panel was going to be at 4 when I agreed to it. I thought it would be earlier in the day. But, I mean, I don't, even if I get out of there at 5, it's rush hour from the beach. So, so I don't. It starts at 4. Right, starts uh, at 4. Oof, yes, that's. So I don't see myself getting back here right at 6. Plus, I think. And I think these guys are all going to. Mr. Walker I'm planning up, on right? attending as well. That's yeah. what I think well, and then they have the barbecue thing. Not that I have to be at the barbecue thing. I didn't commit to that. But I, I mean. Yeah, but I'm still, I think, getting out of there. <laughs> I'm assuming what I'm doing is going to be at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I, I don't know. By the and time I get back are here, good because they always breed a lot of. Players. Yeah, so I mean, I I can see myself coming at six thirty versus six. Are you you're going to be there too, aren't you, John? <coughs> at the resiliency oh, conference. Mm -hmm. So we all are. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> and this is teacher appreciation yeah. stuff too. Yeah, we have. I mean, we have a number of students coming for teacher appreciation. Well, I did kind of warn you a month ago, but that was just me, though. That was like that was just you. Now it's it was not the entire commission. The whole commission, right. right? Well, and when I agreed to do it, I guess they well, it was um, a lot of Frank, times it's been Frank really backed out, <laughs> and they needed to fill, right? Wasn't it Frank that back then? Yeah, I'm not sure, but I, that was what I oh, was assuming. Frank is out now. Yeah, yeah well, that's out. what I'm saying. Yeah. Frank was supposed to be on. I think <clears throat> it was Frank that was supposed to be on the panel, and, and then they had a hold of Phil, so I said I would do it. We don't. Not knowing that it was at 4 o'clock. Right. I mean, we don't have anything controversial. We could do it with a short board. Or does that mean you guys will have to? Right. We're going to. And I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. You guys will just have to leave my panel. See, they would probably be there for and the that's... panel. Shoot. I meant to say. What's on here? Uh, Landscape architecture, stuff, stuff. Secret reading of mobility. Or CAFR. The big thing is the kids. Yes. It is. And we can't even move that to Tuesday then, right? Just because it's uh -uh. kids. There, there's a lot there. What if 
Is this like a crazy, terrible idea? What if we made the meeting seven o'clock instead of six? Well, we'd have to uh, contact, is Phyllis still here? No, we'd have to contact <coughs> these folks and, and move I mean, them back. it's still yeah. the same night, it just isn't the same time. Right. I mean, I'm sure I, I can make it here for that, and I'm sure the rest of us can probably make it here for that. Maybe not you, but right. depending on what you're doing, because you're on the board. Yeah, so let me reach out and, and see if we can move these folks back. Um, I just want to confirm with Jennifer because I did advertise for ordinance 22-18 right. mm -hmm. and it is advertised at six. At six. Mm. Well, that's a problem. Ooh. And that advertisement's already. Mayor, we can also do, we can do, because the CAFR is a presentation, um, so we can do the ordinance and the CAFR and we can move the, the awards back to seven and see if they can come at seven. We could do that. Mm -hmm. We could just change the agenda. Yeah, but the CAFR and the... Um, ordinance and the award isn't going to take an hour and we talk slow <laughs> <laughs> just kidding Less no it will not take an hour yeah, but i mean even if they're who are they presenting to is the point if we're not going to be here uh -huh. that's the whole point well a short board if we have to start the meeting at six because of the ordinance then we would we would have to go with, with the three commissioners that we can ha we can get here. Well, I was going to say there's nothing critical about the second reading of that. No. Chapter 82 it could be moved. Easy. It's not like people you know some ordinances I mean, you're don't, waiting for. I don't want any one of you to crawl down the dais and hit me, but it just sounds like we should be canceling this meeting. But but for the kids. Well, it's, it's really, I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the teachers, right? It's the top Apple schools and the teachers. I mean, they might have the kids there. They're oh, I teachers. see. Yeah. It's the teachers. Mm -hmm. It's not the kids. It's the teachers. Mm -hmm. Well, I committed to do this thing with not knowing what time it was during the day. And they're not going to change that agenda. It's like burnt in stone. They're not going to change it. Well, and I do think it's important that Dunedin is on that panel, personally. Very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. So, do you think it's a huge deal to shift a day on them, like to a different meeting? Or? I was thinking it's kids. It's not. It's the teachers. Not that they're not important too. Right. Well, I think that that they're getting to the end of the school year. I think it. You know, the school last day of school is the twenty fifth. So. You know, it might be difficult to get them to the next round of commission meetings with all their stuff going on at school towards the end of the year. I'm not sure how many of these teachers are, are going to be here uh, to begin with. So. Okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't we approve this agenda? And why don't you, I know you're leaving, but let Jorge work with Phyllis to see if there's, if, how concerned she is. About we'll see what we can do. The next meeting is the 18th. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. And I know that the high school graduation is the 17th. Yeah. So trying to grab a teacher the day after graduation. No, that's during school. I don't know. Mayor, I think you should move forward with a short board for this. I'm sorry, I just do. We, we which means that, which means you guys are just going to have to hustle back and get, you know. I agree with that. We can hustle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we need a 15 minute break before. Maybe we'll get a police uh, escort for you. <laughs> there you go. I like well, that. Dear, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Have you seen our traffic? Yes. They're not going to move any faster yeah, than I am. I don't care if they do have a siren. <laughs> you do have a helicopter, though. You do have a helicopter. Yeah, you come pick me up on the roof of the hotel yeah, down at the beach. I'll be. Because I'm going to be fighting the, the, the all the beach the traffic going home. Dwayne's got an idea. For that's what I'm going to be fighting. Have the ferry. I think, yeah, as far as the presence and, and um, because it is so important to have a member on that uh, presentation panel, it's an honor to be on it. We'll be sure that we'll have plenty of staff there to support you as well. I know well, that you're talking be there. Natalie's she will be. be there. And Mo will I, be I know there. you'd rather have your colleagues. Yeah. Natalie have that and staff Mo, no, I, I, listen, I'm just trying to, whatever you guys think. Oh, well, it's also And, and it is there. your liaison right. position. Yeah, so. I, I don't have a problem being here. Yeah, so. But we have to have three people right, to have so a I just need two other. The men, the men can handle this. We got this. <laughs> Come on, girl. 
There Yay! You go. Well, we'll just see if the men can handle it. Or we might have to set a few traps up. For Maybe you. I will go to the barbecue now. <laughs> <laughs> they got it covered. Yeah, they go. That sounds like a challenge. They got it covered. <laughs> well, John, thank you because you'll be running the meeting there, buddy. Don't forget to give him his cheat sheet. All right, so um, include on top of this uh, fourth agenda. Say, can I just say this? And John, since it's been said the men can handle it, there's a lot of pressure on you, and you're going to be. <laughs> oh, she's care, really so. rubbing it in. <laughs> we got this. I'm, I'm so excited about the emails and comments we're going to get. Yeah. <laughs> how wonderful we are. Um. I just got an email saying that uh, April something to March or to May 2nd is City Clerk's Week oh. proclamation asking the, the national organization is asking for a proclamation. She knows it. She just didn't put it anywhere. Well, we should put it on then. So, for sure. so either the Tuesday, I mean, technically it should be on the Tuesday. Tuesday. It should be on the Tuesday meeting, but we've already approved that. So is everybody okay with adjusting that? Totally. we got to celebrate City Clerk Week. Okay. Um, okay. So with that change to the second and the May 4th, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. moved. Second. Wow, the men just came okay. out. They want that Vice moment. Vice Mayor and, and wow. uh, Commissioner Gao, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Well, no, nay. No. Just <laughs> Motion passes unanimously. I think they're a little too excited now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, now we'll go to our informational items that we did not get a chance to get to. On Tuesday, uh, but I didn't see any emails on commission discussions, so I'll go to city clerk's update. I don't have anything. Anything? Else. Okay, city manager update. I don't have anything for you. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, you do. I'm sorry. I know you do. Oh, <laughs> it's looking at the mayor. Oh, I do. Okay. So, um, Vince Gizzi sent everybody an email this afternoon, uh, and I'll just read it uh, into the record. Okay. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners, it is my pleasure to share with you this wonderful news in the email below. Um, the Parks and Recreation Department submitted an, an award application to the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council on behalf of, of our city for the Future of the Region Awards, Natural Resources and Environment category for the Gladys E. Douglas Preserve. We will be honored at the 29th Annual Future of the Region Awards Luncheon on May 5th, 2023 which means that we, uh, we won some sort of an award uh, for the Gladys Douglas property. And there's a luncheon, uh, and we will, they will be and conveyed we'll during be the course of the luncheon. So um, very pleased. Parks and Rec put together a great uh, award application. Yeah. Um, very proud of it. And as you know, they do a video. They, I mean, they, they, oh, they yeah. really do it up upright. So I'm, I'm really excited yeah. about that. Um, staff <coughs> has been ready for this announcement. We were hoping we get it. We are kind of wondering where it was. A little nervous that it hadn't come yet. Um, but uh, they will be coordinating the, the purchasing the tables, and I think that we'll need one or two tables uh, for the fifth. So, uh, really, ex I think it's all on your calendars already. So, yeah. really excited about that. And that, this will be number two for the Gladys Douglas property, and we're steaming forward. Awesome. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, so you turn the update? I have nothing. Nada? No. Okay. Um, okay, we'll go to commission comments, talk about our liaison stuff and anything else you think we all should know. Vice Mayor Tonga, anything? I have nothing. <clears throat> Commissioner? Um, a, a few things. Uh, PSTA meeting. We have our board meeting next week, So, but yesterday we had our finance and our planning meeting, which nothing there. It goes to the board, so none of this is final, but we did talk about uh, the audit and our CAFR and... <laughs> We, let me see, uh, we got an unmodified opinion that states that the financial statements were fairly represented. And that is just gold. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. But only if you're in the accounting well realm and understand <laughs> that. It sounds so boring and dull, but we get excited when, when we read that because <laughs> uh, 
So anyway, that was very exciting. Uh, we do have an upcoming workshop where we're going to talk about, we're starting our, our, our budget process and we're talking about our reserve levels and things of that nature. And so uh, that'll be exciting. I'll have more to report on that upcoming. Schools, we're winding down, speaking of schools. Uh, and so right next at our, our May 4th meeting, we're going to recognize that we got the top Apple Award and things of that nature. Attended a um, uh, baseball game last night. Um, very, I was really impressed, not only with the team, the team, uh, they ended the game in seven innings, I think it was. We, we won eight to nothing. So it was, it was a great game. Go Falcons, great night. But uh, Mo, I was very impressed with the Toronto Blue Jays staff. Right. And uh, the stadium was clean. They were there. They were represented. Uh, the scoreboard in the outfield was working and being operated. I'm assuming that was uh, Blue Jay staff that was doing that. Yeah, they do. They do. So it, else touch it, them, so it was just what a wonderful partnership that was. That was just very nice. If we could just work on the no they were terrible. Oh, yeah. Well, um, but other than that, stuff, right? Good. Uh, yeah, uh, let me see. And just wanted to acknowledge uh, Tartan Week and. We had a proclamation and now I'm just here, but they had three days of a concert series of a scary war and the Byrne brothers. And it ended uh, at Weaver Park on, on that Saturday. And that was just uh, for anybody who wasn't there. That was just amazing. Uh, scary war. Uh, you talk about them as uh, Scotland's top band and they really are. They were an amazing band and just a great group of, of individuals as people. You talk to them, they were very open and honest and approachable. Uh, the Byrne brothers were there and they're out of uh, Orlando area, uh, but they're wonderful because that's just a family band. And you want them during the week and they talk about, well, the kids are in school, you know, so they all attend school, so they come over on weekends, it's pretty cool. And the Isle of Sky dancers got to dance and you got to see the little ones dance and do their uh, traditional Scottish dancing. So the whole three days was just wonderful. So it was just wonderful to see the extension of um, the Holland Games and Scottish Week and Tartan uh, Day, and just to acknowledge that next year, Tartan Day falls on the same day as the Holland Games. Oh, cool. And, uh, Very cool. So uh, hopefully cool things will happen. But that's all that I have right now. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. <clears throat> can't believe we're not, we haven't had a Tartan car parade yet, but I guess we have the, you know, <clears throat> Just saying. Not to get something started. Um, anyway, um, no, and actually, you know, I went to the Weaver Park thing, Jeff, and but I was there, like, from, like, 2.30 to 4.30. So everything started at 4. I got to see the Pipers come in. Um, but, you know, I had company. I couldn't stay, but I was bummed because it, that looked like it was going to be awesome. The way it started in the... And the you know the the dancers that started too. But, I believe the last two years. I didn't uh, get to see the top band. Out. And so uh, and that's always stressful on a rain or shine event. And this year it's like you know, but it was a beautiful it was a beautiful day. So yeah, thank you. It was gorgeous. Um, my only thing is um, just to overwhelm you a little bit, but on May third, and you know the day before the all men's commission meeting is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, is uh, they're doing a, a kind of an event, um, a little, I, I don't know what to call it, but like a party type thing from 6 to 7.30 for the Tampa Bay Regional Planning. You guys might even see it in your information that you've all gotten, I don't know. But anyway, from 6 to 7.30 at the Clearwater Hilton, they really want a lot, as many elected officials as they can get there. They're going to have a lot of the stakeholders and representatives of, you know, resiliency issues, et cetera, there. Um, you know, obviously it'll be overlooking the water, heavy hors d'oeuvres, drinks, that, that'll all be, you know, provided. But, you know, the biggest thing is they just, they want to get as much representation from electeds as they can. Um, so, um, so I just say that if anybody can do that on Wednesday night, yeah, I that'd be awesome. It's May 3rd? It's May 3rd. It's Wednesday night. Not Are you staying down there? You guys I'm staying, staying down there. there. Yeah, you know, they, be the they provide thing. us to stay down there. And, yeah, so I'll be there. So if you need a place to... You know, just throw your stuff summit. and stuff like that. That's awesome. And then the Resiliency Summit, that is Thursday and Friday. Thursday right. and Friday, yep. All right, mm -hmm. so, okay. So, wow, there, is it's a two-and-a-half night. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, I so. think that's also, too, for people who are staying there, too. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Coming in from out of town. Do they know how many people are going to be at this thing? I don't know what their total is yet. I mean, you know, obviously it was a kind of a big 
you know, they wanted to have a destination style so that they could, you know, you get more people sometimes right. and you have a more destination because sometimes then people stay over on their own right. dime for the weekend. So, um, but I know that they were doing pretty well, so. And Mo, that is not on my calendar and... I don't so think it's it, it, on that list. Okay, so... Wait a minute, let me look. Yeah. I have the list right here. I can make sure that, um, and maybe it's not because it's not just for, it's not really for all the people that signed up. Yeah, day so one they're out is for elected. May 4th. Okay, yeah. so um, I'll make sure Andrea, you know, help me remember to get Andrea to put that on the calendar, so. Because it'd be awesome, you know, as many as you can. And I'm, sure. I'm just glad so many of yeah, you Yeah, and come, I'm not, I'm not going to the whole the, thing. I'm just going, yeah. what I'm doing is coming for the panel. Yeah. Which is great. Which and is then awesome. the lunch the next day. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's Anything all I have. on your end? Okay, so I've got a few things. Uh, one, uh, the um, oh boy, uh, the um, garden party on Sunday was just absolutely wonderful. Great venue, uh, very great turnout, great food, and uh, I just uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, and I'll just echo uh, Commissioner Gao's comments on on. Tartan Festival, uh, that was amazing too. Just, you know, it's really great. Um, finally, and, and certainly not least though, I just want to remind everybody about uh, the, the bet that I made with the city manager with regards to the outcome of the Final Four March mm -hmm. Madness Tournament. And uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely my pleasure to announce that San Diego State Aztecs beat Florida Atlantic um, and uh, as a result of this, uh, I'm not quite sure how this all worked out, but I ended up buying a hat for the city manager to wear and also proclaim, <laughs> just, 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 just publicly say, who won that game? San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say it into the mic, into the camera? In the last second. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, then, you know, it's then San Diego State went on to completely get schooled by UConn in the <laughs> final. <laughs> oh, so. so the bet was that the losing team would have to wear the winning team's hat at a city commission meeting. <laughs> and so I just, at Highland Games, we were walking along, discovered that our teams, our schools were actually playing each other in the final four. And so the bet was that you would have to wear the hat at the city commission meeting. <laughs> and so I was watching the game, and... Um, my team was ahead the entire game, the entire game, way ahead the entire game. Yeah. yeah, and so I jinxed my team, and I purchased a hat for the commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I like that it's Yeah, but you didn't, have, you, did, you didn't make her wear it the entire meeting. No, see, it looks well. lovely on you. <laughs> and so the what I ordered on Amazon had sparkles on it and it was like <laughs> really pink but that was the one that arrived but i think it's pink enough don't yeah, you? Yeah. oh yeah it's yeah. way pink enough yeah, yeah. Absolutely. There you go. i'll i'll, I'll wear it a picture, because Sue. i literally this is totally a picture i literally was uh <laughs> yeah there we go <laughs> i i was literally pretty sure in the second half that i was going to be wearing this yeah hat. i was too <laughs> I do make it's the nice motion, however, that Jennifer needs to wear that for an entire meeting. No. Did I get a second? <laughs> no. No second? I'm not well, a hat person. I'm a terrible hey, I get a hat second. person. I don't, I, people force me to wear stuff on my I'm head. sorry, we have a motion to second. You have to call for the vote. Okay, well, I will call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. <laughs> okay. Well, I have to get with the city attorney about whether or not that's good. a binding vote. <laughs> right. okay. Fair enough. Okay. Very cool. Anything else? That's all I've got. <laughs> that's probably enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys look hilarious. So, Send me that picture. <laughs> so, um, just on my end, um, so History Museum, um, Mark Middleton is the new... Uh, chair um, for the board now and um, they are working Jennifer is assisting they have a subcommittee working on um, Benny's going to retire by the end of the year and they're working on now recruitment of a, a new director is that calendar year so December that's the plan 
That's yeah. the plan. Um, Jennifer's part of the sub. Jennifer was sweet <laughs> enough sweet enough to agree to be on their um, search subcommittee since she has a lot of experience doing a search. I felt it would be more appropriate for her than me um, to be on it. Um, so that's good. I feel comfortable about that. So all of that's good. That's why Roby can't get a meeting with you, you know? <laughs> yeah, probably. We've got her doing all kinds of things. She's too busy, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so that's that with the History Museum, I think, for now. Um, forward Pinellas, uh, besides the seat thing that we already talked about, um, working on this ferry issue. Um, we are in talks with PSTA to be the uh, managing partner to manage the ferry. Um, we're in talks with them about applying for a grant, um, new service grant, which would pay 50% of the cost of the ferry. Um, if we can get that grant, we can definitely get the county to participate financially. I'm sure of it. Um, and we're also Jennifer Cowan has been helping on the opinions on whether bed tax money can be used for such things. Yeah, yeah. So um, even though I didn't answer you, I did get your your. She called a friend of hers down in Manatee because Manatee's getting ready to do ferry service, and if the ferry service goes to tourist destinations and connects those tourist destinations, then there is some thought about. The, the ability to use bed tax money, not just for capital, but for service. So we have all kinds of good things, you know, it's just getting all the right people in the right room to make the right decision. Um, so I'm if, working on that. If it can be tied to tourism, can that be expanded to beyond the ferry, but public transit? I think it could. Trolley? I think it could be possibly tied. Sunrunner? Sunrunner, not sure. I think it could, because I think they won other grants for the number of workers they would be carrying. So you can't say a one time it's workers and then one time it's, you know what I'm saying? But I will say to you that what I do but think you, is if it works for the ferry, it I could work for could the- I think it could be made, but- I think what it could be made to is, is uh, increasing our service for the trolley. Yeah, and if you load on too much stuff, none of it will happen. Right, so, yeah. right. Stay singularly focused. Well, but that is the thing with I the get tourism. You, we ask for all these tourists to come. Yeah. We yeah. have to help. I totally so agree. Work, you know, right. I'm there with you. So thank you for working on that. I'm working hard on it. Um, baby steps. It's not e even uh, county attorney's office is starting to, they got their hands on that same opinion. Mm -hmm. Um. So they're starting to talk now. They're, they're warming up. Michael Zoss is warming up. So anyway, that's all going on. Um, from the TDC perspective, Tourist Development Council, um, they did an activation, a marketing activation in um, Philadelphia. And so I, sa so I said, well, why won't you do one in Toronto? We're going at the end of June, will you do an activation at the Toronto Stadium? So they're looking into it. We'll see if they do or don't. Um, but I thought it would be great <coughs> if they could be there the same time we are. I guess at one of the I guess at one of the race games they did a giveaway. <coughs> well, I'm like, well, do a giveaway while we're there, you know? And it can say visit St. Pete Clearwater, but it could say and Dunedin on it if you're printing it, you know. So, I don't know where this will go, but working on it. Um, I think that's my only liaison positions, right? That's it. Oh, and well, just reminding everybody, um, Saturday at 4 o'clock is um, Wendy Barmore's uh, event at Edgewater Park. So, I will be there for a short period of time because I'm speaking, but then I'll have to leave because I had a family birthday. That night and I think that's it right Cinco de Mayo it's coming that's all I know it is Earth Day on the 22nd oh yeah Earth Day and it is the all men's commission meeting on 
<laughs> the 4th of May. Yeah. And it is a red letter day. Let's not Absolutely. forget that. Yeah. Would you Go mind, down in infamy. Would you mind telling Mo when Cinco de Mayo is? <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. The day, before, it's the day after the All Men's Situation Day. <laughs> yeah, the Cinco de Mayo is on the fifth. That's when it should be. It's the same day as the. <laughs> it's the same day as the luncheon, and I will be going. To, I will be going. I will be leaving. Cinco that de Mayo event might start going to Cinco de Mayo. on the night of the fourth. <laughs> We, yes, we had to respond to the comments being made, you know. I know. You know. Well, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> okay. I don't think I have anything else. So. That's it? You guys are cracking me up. <laughs> I can't even look this way. Have it's a safe up. vacation, Jennifer. Thank you. I will. All right. All right. We are adjourned. All right.